So hi everyone and welcome to another Sunday Zoom meeting for the Facebook group A Course in Miracles with Keith. And uh, if you want to join us, come join the Facebook group, but please you must agree to the group rules uh, prior to being accepted. So you must do that on application because we turn away at least, I don't know, 30, 40 people a week because they haven't agreed to the group rules. Um, so um, let's get on with things. Uh, I think it's probably time that we go back and talk about miracle principles or we'll never get them finished. Um, I, I guess I just wanted to um, talk about, because I, I, I've said it in the group this morning, but, you know, we have a lot of people that join us here on YouTube, or, yeah, on YouTube who aren't in, uh, on social media. Uh, there's a, there's a beautiful um, audition on Britain's Got Talent by a young lad called Malachi, M-A-L-A-K-A-I. And if you do a search in YouTube for Malachi and P-A Yezu, um, you'll hear the most beautiful performance of it. And um, and I, and I, I, this is something that it's, you know, because we talked about special relationships and we've talked about how you know, special love isn't really love. It's um, it's hate, um, and but the other side of that, you know, that doesn't mean that you have never connected with love in your mind, and extended that love to another person because you have. Um, and when when Mickey sent me that link today, um, for Pia Yeza with Malachi singing it on Britain's Got Talent. Um, it's so beautiful. Now, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, um, never in that which is beheld. There is no cause in the world. Um, and so all you're ever doing is you are interacting with the world and either it brings up your blockages um, or you can kind of, it helps you get past your blockages to love's presence in your mind, which is your right mind. And... Um, I'm not going to share um, Malachi's singing uh, just because it will get me into trouble with YouTube <laughs> and they won't do subtitles uh, for my video, which is what happened to us at Christmas. Um, but when you when you do listen to a beautiful piece of music and when it moves you to tears, um, it's it's really important because, you know, we, we've been talking over the last number of weeks how there's no cause in the world. So the world doesn't make you feel anything. All it's going to do is um, there's going to be an internal experience happen <laughs> as you watch the dream unfold. Um, and so we have been using that in the context of it doesn't matter what's happening. It doesn't matter if someone's in the middle of torturing you or murdering you or um, if you're sick or you're well or you're whatever the case may be, whatever, you know, thoughts and feelings are coming up. That's what was inside you already. The world's not doing anything to you. Because the world is an effect. It's not, it's never a cause. And that's why we um, forgive our brother for what he didn't do. Because your brother can't make you feel anything. Um, and so whatever we are feeling in our daily life, and this is the practice of A Course in Miracles, becoming mindful of what's happening inside of you because the world's not doing it. Um, and so as much as um, if somebody does something to me and pain and anger and rage um, come out, you know, my ego will want to feel totally justified <laughs> and say, you did this to me. You put these feelings in me and nobody can do that. All that's happening is what's the guilt that's inside me is coming up. Um, and I'm projecting it. Uh, but in the same way, um, everyone has a right mind and a wrong mind. And what you are is a decision maker that is in every given moment choosing which mind to be in. And, you know, when you are in the your wrong mind, um, you will think you are the insane voice talking to itself and the emotions coming up and that you are at the effect of the world. So especially when we come to the course in the beginning, <laughs> that's pretty much where we're living. Um, and the alternative is to be in our right mind. 
Um, and that does not mean that your wrong mind goes away because <laughs> it won't. <laughs> that, at least not till you get to the real world. Um, being in your right mind is being a non-judgmental observer of your wrong mind. Um, and that's what we've been talking about, this stepping back into the cinema with Jesus, this stepping back into the seat of the self, the right mind itself, um, and, and being the noticer of thoughts and feelings happening. And at the same time, noticing the noticer, that the noticer is independent of what's happening. That's how we bring our wrong mind to our right mind. Anyway... <laughs> In terms of the beautiful piece of music that we play today, if you listen to a beautiful piece of music or you have the experience of a beautiful sunset or sunrise or you hold your first child for the first time or you see the majesty and beauty of nature or an animal looking after its young or you watch an inspirational mu movie about the triumph of the human spirit and it moves you to tears and you have that sense that there is goodness in the world and that uh, that sense that comes into you which is like almost all is well despite all the illusions and the nonsense um the which when i listened to that song it had me in tears um and i and, and it had me feel the love of the holy spirit in my mind um <clears throat> because again the song doesn't do anything to anyone um it it's either going to, you know, cause me to experience my blockages as I look at the world, the movie, the dream, um, or, or it's going to be helpful to me in temporarily getting past my blockages to the awareness of love's presence in my mind. And something beautiful like the things we've been talking about will get you past the blockages to the awareness of love's presence in your mind temporarily, and you'll experience love. So you'll watch an inspirational movie in tears. Um, you know, you, you can listen to Malachi sing that song. Um, uh, for those that are joining us, I will actually, I'll put a link to it in the comments of the video. And if you're a member of the Facebook group, that if there's a link there. Um, but but something like that can can assist us with temporarily getting beyond the blocks to the awareness of love's presence in our mind. What's the blocks to the awareness of love's presence in our mind? our guilt and the insane voice talking to itself in our mind that's trying to manipulate the world to give it what it thinks it needs to be happy and trying to push away from it the things that it thinks will take its happiness from it. Uh, that's the blocks to the awareness of love's presence in your mind. Uh, the voice talking to itself, the commentator in your head, uh, thinking it knows what anything is for. Um, and so my point is, you know, I, I think a lot of the time students are very anxious to like, you know, I, I haven't really felt the Holy Spirit. I haven't really felt Jesus in my mind. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. This is, the, the, there is no cause in the world, none whatsoever. When you are moved like that um, by something beautiful in the world, um, what you will experience is love's presence in your mind. And then the trap is to say that music makes me feel good. No, it doesn't. All your past preferences that have been set up by your past experiences and how you process them just mean that particular piece of music um, is going to be helpful to you in temporarily getting beyond your blockages to love's presence in your mind. Um, and that's why, you know, okay, the course teaches that the world is an illusion, but it doesn't mean you can't experience um, the Holy Spirit in, in nature, that, you know, nature is temporarily getting you beyond your blockages. Um, a beautiful song like Malachi singing is getting you beyond your blockages and, and, and you fall back into the seat of self. You know, the insane voice talking to itself, the raucous shrieking of the ego dies down and and heaven's symphony plays in your mind. So when you have those experiences in life, um, for the love of God, don't cling to them. Don't cling to them and say, this is the thing that's good for me. This is the thing that helps me uh, feel good. No, it doesn't, you know. Um, 
there's no cause in the world. But when you have those moments of transcendence, those moments where, where you're moved like that, where you feel love's presence in your mind, notice what's happening. Notice what's happening and know that is in your mind all the time. And the purpose of A Course in Miracles ultimately is that you feel nothing but that in your mind all the time. And you have no likes or dislikes in the world. If I have likes and dislikes, preferences and aversions, that's because my mind is sick. I'm not okay on the inside. I'm sick with separateness and guilt. And then the insane voice in my head seeks to manipulate the world and pull towards it things it thinks will make it happy and push away from it the things that it thinks will take its happiness from it. And that's why there's no order of difficulty in miracles. That's why there's no hierarchy of illusions. That's why Jesus said, make this year different by making it all the same. So we're not overnight <laughs> going to let all our preferences and aversions go and our likes and dislikes go. But this is what you want to be looking at in your practice of being in the cinema with Jesus. You want to be looking at the insane voice going, this is what's making you happy. And this will make you happy. And that's going to make you unhappy. And you need to avoid that at all costs. You know, and I, I couldn't be peaceful if I had sickness or pain. I couldn't be peaceful if that, if that family member died. That would make me feel a certain way. All nonsense. The world does nothing in terms of the, the mind that you're in. It's all what you're doing with your own mind. And the course, you know, it, it's really asking us to... Jesus says he, he needs us to rethink every single belief and assumption we've ever had to do the course. We really, you know, J Jesus says, um, you know, <laughs> what got us into the mess was judgment. And what gets us out of the mess that we're in is becoming non-judgmental, dropping judgment. What does judgment mean? Judgment means... This is what I think I need to have in my future in order to be happy. And I can't have that in my future or I'll be unhappy. That's judgment. And this is where we get to the really the deeper meaning of forgiveness. Forgiveness really is letting the world be exactly what it is with no desire that it be different. What does it have to do with love's presence in my mind? Nothing. The world is playing. And the world is going to show me where I'm blocked. So I'm not blocked listening to incredibly gifted boy sopranos singing religious music. So I've got no blockages there. Uh, I, can, I can get straight to love's presence in my mind and feel the Holy Spirit. Um, but can I, can I feel that? Um, when I'm in the midst of being criticized or attacked or vilified, that's going to show me where my blocks are. Can I do it when I'm contemplating the fact that I'm aging? Um, can I do it when I become sick or experience pain? Can I do it when someone I love dies? No. And so this is why all things work together for good, except in the ego's judgment. Because those things are showing me the blockages in me to the awareness of love's presence all the time. Because if I don't have love's presence in my mind all the time, like I do at a beautiful sunset or a beautiful piece of music, um, then my mind is sick with guilt. And manipulating the world is not the answer. It doesn't work. You know, 
I can manipulate the world just right. I need to have this situation, you know. I go visit this beautiful scene in nature and I go there and I'm incredibly, I'm, I'm aware of God's presence. The Holy Spirit's love is blazing in my mind. I feel the sense of oneness and connectedness and it's beautiful. And I go, okay, this is where I need to be. All I need to do is come here every day. Guess what? The next time you go, it's not going to come together like that. <laughs> you know, on the day, everything just came together in a perfect storm. You know, the weather, the light, um, you know, the background noise, um, whether other people were there or not. Um, everything just came together in a way that will get you past your personal blocks temporarily. Go back the second time. Is it going to work? No, it's not going to work like the first time. You know, and again, it's like when we meet someone and we fall in love and it's like, all I need is this person and I will never want for anything ever again. I will live in a tent with them on the street begging if I can just be with this person. My God, this love in my mind. Now, the love is real. You know, the, the neediness is not. <laughs> And the idea that somebody else is responsible for the love in your mind, that's not true. But just in that moment, you're able to get beyond the blocks to the awareness of love's presence in your mind. But at some point in time, that person's going to say something. They're going to do something. They're going to start snoring in the tent. <laughs> Um, they're not going to pick their smelly socks up. <laughs> um, you know, they're going to sort of, you, you, you know, you'll see them checking out somebody else. Um, and suddenly your perfect storm is gone. And suddenly this person isn't getting you past your blocks anymore. You can't access love in your mind. And then you go, you did this to me. <laughs> you ruined it. But no, all they're showing you is where you're blocked. Can you stay in your right mind? Can you stay in the cinema with Jesus? Can you hold to the awareness of love's presence in your mind? No matter what. You know, whether the weather is good or the weather is bad. Whether you're having a wonderful family celebration or your whole family is getting massacred whether you're sick or whether you're well. Your body is sick or well. You're never sick <laughs> or well. Um, but can you stay in your right mind? Um, and the answer is we can't. And that's why we need the course. So all things work together for good, except in the ego's judgment. The world's going to play and I'm going to shut down. No love in my mind. And that's where the course comes in. It's getting you back out of the world, out of trying to manipulate the world so you can be happy, which doesn't work. Um, where you spend the rest of your life trying to manipulate the world to be happy and it never works. As Jesus says, it's the, the ego sick mantra of seek and do not find. Constantly trying to arrange things so you can get past the blocks in your mind, the guilt and the self-hatred and the loathing of separateness to access the love and go, this is the reason for it. The world's doing it to me. That's how I need the world to be so I can have this sense of well-being. No, all you got to do is fall back into your right mind. All you got to do is choose again. And that's what forgiveness is. That what's happening in the dream be exactly what Jesus says. Let all things be exactly as they are. Stop trying to manipulate it. Your manipulation of what's happening in the dream is blocking your happiness. The minute you stop trying to manipulate it, the minute you forgive it, the insane voice talking to itself quietens down. You fall back into your seat of self and there's the love for the Holy Spirit. You just joined Jesus in the cinema. Um, you become 
you let go of your identification with the insane voice talking to itself in your mind and the emotions that are happening. They don't stop. <laughs> and don't stop them. Don't touch them. But you become the witness of them. It's the hardest thing for me to teach people about the process of being above the battleground with Jesus or being in the cinema with Jesus is they keep thinking the me that's thinking and feeling is sitting in the movie theater with Jesus. No, 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 no. That's a movie character. So the, the you that's in the cinema with Jesus is the you that can. It's not the insane voice talking to itself in your mind. It is the you uh, who hears it. the you who hears it that's when you're in the cinema with Jesus and so in our daily life what you want to do is try to spend as much time as possible in the cinema with Jesus do not fight your thoughts do they're not even your thoughts <laughs> don't fight the thoughts coming up which are simply the result of all the experiences that you've ever had um, and how you process them based on your guilt. Uh, do not um, try to fight your feelings. Remember, that's your guilt coming up. Uh, that's what we want, but we just want to release it by not projecting it onto the world and saying, you did this to me. Because the world didn't. The world's going to give you exactly what you need to see, to sort out your blockages blocks to the awareness of love's presence in your mind that's what the course is all about what could you not accept if you but knew that all things all events past present and to come were gently planned by the holy spirit for your good what's the good it's going to bring up your blockages <laughs> so you can sort them out if you don't push them away if you don't say, this is bad, I can't have this happening in the movie. I need to manipulate it. I need to change it. Um, I need to blame someone so I don't have to sit with this in myself. But that's what we're letting go. It's our first step in the forgiveness formula. We undo our projections. We take responsibility that what's coming up inside of me is my guilt. We undo that first impulse to project it out onto the world and be an innocent victim of the world. Right. Um, shall we do the miracle principles or shall we... Any, anything in the chat box, Eli, before we go forwards with the miracle principles? Are we good? I think we're good in the chat. Um, there was one... Uh, as Sherry G had said, hi, everyone. I know there are only two voices in my mind. Sorry, I have something. Black. Okay. But it seems like there are many more in quotation or in parentheses, lots of ego. She's asking like all those voices that you feel like there's more than one voice, a million voices going on in your head. Yes. <laughs> and you're not ego. any of them. You're yeah. not any of them. You're not any of them. You know, you're not the holy one. Uh, you're not the murderous unholy one. You're none of them. You are, you are the one that hears them. The one that hears them can, can hear the Holy Spirit. So if you're identified as any of the voices in your head, the do-gooder, the angry one, <laughs> the vicious one, uh, it doesn't matter which one, um, none of them are you. Um, and, and as long as you're identified as, as, as one of the voices in your head, you, can, you can't hear heaven's symphony. As Jesus says in the song of prayer about the Holy Spirit's voice, the real sound is always a song of thanksgiving and love. That's the song. In terms of advice of the Holy Spirit, that's the echo. And Jesus is really clear in the song of prayer. You cannot have the echo. You cannot ask for the echo. It is the song you want. And then the echo is added. So it's about getting back to love's presence in your mind. And the only place you can experience love in your mind is in the cinema with Jesus as, 
as the one who hears the voices in your head, not identified with the voices in your head. I just, that's the I, you that's in the center. Go ahead, Cherry. Hi, um, I just read somewhere that um, there were two voices, the Holy Spirit and the ego. Mm -hmm. So then I'm thinking, oh, if there's only one ego voice, I'm like, a bunch of different voices are going on at the same time. So I was thinking, am I crazy or what? But a couple no. of people chat made me <laughs> calm <Yeah>. down. <laughs> Absolutely. Now the ego has many different faces and many different masks and many different personalities and, you know, um, and you're not any of that. You're the one that hears them. Okay. That's Thanks. the you that's with Jesus in the cinema. Um, that's the you that but sees the journey from the point at which it ended, looking back, imagining we make it once again. That's the you that's outside time and space. Um, that is the restoration of mindfulness back from the mindlessness that we chose when we projected into the world. Um, because you're no longer identified as form, um, no longer identified as a body. You are that which is aware of the body. And that goes for the mental body as well as the physical body. That's, you know, again, one of the big goals of the course is to become mindful again, to undo the mindlessness um, that we chose by making a world and projecting ourselves into it. Yeah. So, and and that's why... That's why it's it's only ever. That's why the big message and, and the thing Ken spent his whole life hammering home to people is um, join with Jesus and look at your look at your ego without judging it. That's all you do. Because you know the game, the, the, the whole idea of this this thing, this game, this process, it's not to heal your ego. It's to realize you're not your ego. You know, I'm, I'm choosing to identify with an insane voice talking to itself in my mind and, you know, emotions and wants and needs and likes and dislikes. And I can do that for as long as I want. But the important thing is I know I'm choosing. Because just as easily I can choose to completely disregard the thoughts that are going on in my mind. In fact... That's what Jesus wants us to do. And <laughs> again, that's not something a lot of people realize um, in the beginning with the course. But where this is going um, is that ultimately, you know, most of our days are spent, we, we open our eyes in the morning and it's like, the voice in your head is going, okay, what time is it? Okay, it's nine o'clock. Okay, I've got 20 minutes before I got to get to work. Now I'm going to get out. Now what am I going to wear? Okay, that red one. Yeah, but then I wore that last week. Okay, I'm going to wear the pink one. And then like, oh, look at the light coming in the window. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, okay, right. Now maybe I should ring my father before I get going. Oh, but then he could be in the middle of the shower and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's, that's, um, <laughs> that's your wrong mind. <laughs> That's the insane voice talking to itself. That's the common commentator, <laughs> the crazy commentator in your head. And that's 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 where we are when we fall asleep and forget about being in the cinema with Jesus. We we think that's it. That's this is my identity. That's mindlessness. You know, but but ultimately Jesus wants us to get, and, and you know, it's gonna be like, well, I need to do this in the world and I need to meet this type of person because this type of person is what I need to be happy. And then this person, you know, this other kind of person, this is not what I need to be happy, and I need to like manipulate the world and I need to look a certain way and I need to like keep in the right circles and blah 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 blah. And actually, what Jesus is taking us is why are you listening to that insanity? Why would you listen to an insane voice talking to itself that doesn't know what anything is for? I know how to help you get rid of your blockages and have eternal bliss, joy, love, and happiness going on inside of you. Will you listen to me? Now, of course, we don't want to. <laughs> We're like, no, no, no. I really need to get the uh, cosmetic surgery. <laughs> I really need to get that new wardrobe sourced out. <laughs> you know, I really need to lose a few pounds. And, uh, you know, that's what's going to make me happy. And it won't. And Jesus is just waiting patiently going, you know, when you're ready to know the secret of eternal bliss, happiness and joy in this lifetime, 
I'm here. I want to teach you. But you got to stop listening to the insane voice talking to itself. You don't have to shut it up. You don't have to stop it talking. It won't stop talking. Good luck with that. <laughs> okay. Um, but he's saying, why are you listening to the insane voice in your head? Because, you know, we have Jesus or the Holy Spirit as one voice and, you know, the insane commentator um, in our mind. Which is wrong about everything. <laughs> um, and Jesus is going, whenever you're ready to stop listening to the insane voice in your head and listen to what I say instead, um, I, I can give you the secret of <laughs> perfect happiness and peace and love. Uh, but but you know that's that's what we're gently working with in the course. So ideally, in terms of that insane voice talking to itself, we should get to a point with the, with our course practice where the insane voice sounds like this. I wonder if maybe I and if I, that's where we want to be headed. That's our goal. Now, we're not going to do that overnight. You're not going to do that for prolonged periods of time. Um, but that's, that, that's, a, that's a massive part of my course practice during the daytime. Is not listening to the insane voice talking to itself in my mind. Now, listen, I'm no saint. I'm not in the real world all the time. Um, I've got to work with myself the same as I will go into one consciousness um, and then realize, dear God, I've been out of the cinema for 15 minutes. Um, and so, you know, it's not about guilt because you can't stay in the cinema. It's, it, it's, it's about the discipline to go back. Yeah. You know, when in, in talking about um in talking about special relationships in the course, um Jesus says, um your needs, uh, which are entirely based on the past, um, dictate the kind of person that you get into a relationship with, and then you see them as special and different to everyone else. So we said in the holy relationship, you have no needs. Needs. Make all your brothers seem different. It makes some seem valuable to you and others seem invaluable to you. Um, and so ideally we want to get a place where we, all our brothers are the same. Make this year different by making it all the same. We don't need anything from any of them. All we got to do is release our blocks and fall back into our right mind with love's presence, where we're invulnerable to the world. So we're moving towards a situation in our life where we need nothing off anyone, where we don't expect anyone to make us happy. And, and we know nobody can take happiness from us, even if they're crucifying us. That's where Jesus was. And from that place, now we can love the entire world once we don't need anything there. There are no needs. If you have needs, your mind is sick with guilt and you're trying to compensate for it in the wrong way. <laughs> you have needs, if you have likes, if you have dislikes, if you're going, I can handle that in my life, but I can't handle that, that's because your mind is sick with guilt. And that's what you're here oh, for. Right-minded purpose of being here is to be able to release those blockages oh, and do your sickness so you sit in that right-minded self where love just blazes and you extend it to everything that you encounter in the movie which is the real world okay um now should we, <laughs> should we go ahead with the miracle principles or should we ask some questions? Tell you what, let's throw it open for some questions. Do we have anything in the chat box first, Eli? And if anyone wants to ask a question, or you can raise your hand. Yeah, we have um, from Adrian Boyle, is just simply sitting back in the cinema and observing 
the movie with a holy character enough? Is that joining with Jesus? Is that joining with Jesus, Holy Spirit? Just sitting back. I suppose what I'm asking, Keith, is, is like, do you, do you have to feel that sense of peace before, you know, it's working? No. Um, you, you won't feel it in the beginning. <laughs> um, it's going to take a while. Um, and I, mean, I have felt it at times. I definitely have felt it at times. But then that's, I think okay. when that's I all you need to know. Okay, that's all you need to know. Um, the important thing is, you know, whenever you get the opportunity to experience what it is to be the awareness of your thoughts and feelings happening rather than identified with them, that you're constantly anchoring that you know, feeling what that feels like, you know, anchoring yeah. it as something that we can return to. Um, and, and, you know, when you're in the middle of great, well, when I'm in the middle of uh, great, I don't know, let's say there's a confrontation situation happening and you have adrenaline going and you, you know, and you, uh, you feel diminished and instantly, I mean, it's just your guilt coming up and you're you're saying, well, you did this to me, um, which is the insane voice trying to rationalize what's inside of you. And it's trying to push it off and go, no, you're the reason for it. It's not me. I'm not this bad person, I feel like. And I don't, you know, um, and, and all you do is you you fall back. You fall back. You just notice. You notice what's going on. You notice that your guilt's coming up and you just notice the, the, the huge temptation to push it out there and go, you did this to me. And you're just noticing the insane voice in your head going, but they've no right and they had no business and why would they do that? And that's terrible. And, you know, that's what someone did to me when I was like five and then they do that. How dare they? And why would they say? And I, what I should have said was fall back, fall back. Mm -hmm. just, just fall back. You're not meant to fix your ego. Or vanish it. You're meant to notice it. Yeah, I think, like I think I find like I I go through periods where I'm doing that a lot, and I'm really mm -hmm. into it, and really like this is great. And yeah. then like the last three or four days, I'm like, no, don't want to do it. I just yeah, want to be because... on Netflix and whatever, whatever it is, or escape. But there's nothing wrong with that. There's, but there's yeah, look, there's nothing wrong with that. Um... I can't say I've got, I mean, I I always practice being in the cinema with Jesus watching movies. Well, I have um, done that as well. Like I do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's really good practice because, you know, watch how quickly you leave it and start going, well, you're the bad one. And I hope that, you know, you're the next one that gets killed. So here I am not making everything the same, <laughs> making this year different by making everything the same. Uh, and so, and and in terms of practicing the course watching movies, that's no different. Um, than practicing the course in what we call real life because that's just a movie as well all you're doing is you're looking at your blockages coming up and your but, uh, yeah. and your ego's crappy attempt to fix them and your ego's crappy attempt to fix them is to project them and go well you're to blame for how bad i'm feeling um and it's also to to like sort of distract itself from from its unhappiness by, as you've said, Adrian, what, you know, binging on Netflix or by eating or by drinking or by taking drugs. It's like, you know, again, here's my, here's my guilt coming up so I can now practice the forgiveness process. So I can be in the cinema with Jesus and allow it to release without projection and without pushing it away and without pretending it's not there. Um, and so, you know, either we're going to like project it off and go, well, I'm going to keep my unhappiness, but at least you're to blame. Um, or I'm going to distract myself with drink or drugs or television or movies or, or sex. Um, or I'm going to work on being okay despite this awfulness inside of me by finding the right person and having the right job and blah blah. So 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 what what you're just noticing, just just noticing the the ego's insane ways of trying to fix your guilt, uh, none of which will work. <laughs> It will just stay there and just haunt your entire life and keep coming up over and over again um, until we're ready to just to actually just be be the witness, uh, be in the cinema with Jesus and allow it to release 
without being projected or or, or covered over um, or trying to be compensated for. Uh, in other words, stop trying to fix it, right? So mm. when you say, okay, right, it's all gone to hell in the last while and I just want to like lose myself. Okay, look, you. so that's fine. So you became afraid of love. You just became afraid of love in your mind. Um, yeah, that's going to happen all yeah. the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I met somebody like in the supermarket yesterday, I met somebody who who was doing an awful lot of work on undoing their ego, not not via the course, but through other kind of paths. And I felt really emotional talking to her. And when I, I left, it was like what you were talking about, just that emotion of you experienced the right man through listening to that song or listening to that guy. It was like that. It was like she was in her right mind quite a lot, a lot of the time. like, And it, it, it sort of triggered my right mind, if that makes sense. And Right. That's that's what that, that's what the course is, is, is ultimately trying to train all of us to do, because mm. if you are in your right mind, you see the right mind and the person that you're talking to mm. and they experience their right mind. Yeah, I saw that. And I could that's see that's a brilliant in story. Thanks for yeah, sharing that. That's such a dinner, yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. such a powerful for... um yeah. No, look, that's such a powerful um example for, for all of us here. Um because because it's something that um <laughs> will always inevitably get me into trouble when I teach it. Uh we don't make the error real. You know, healing in the course is about letting go of your sick belief that something needs to be healed. So what you're just saying is that, you know, that woman didn't leave her seat of self. No, exactly. Yeah. Um, her right mind was present and she and therefore she saw you not as an ego, not as an insane voice talking to itself, but as as, you know, what sits in the seat behind that um, your right mind the you that's always in the cinema with Jesus. So she saw that. And because she was doing that, you had that experience. Yes. Well, that's how the Holy Spirit wants us to save the world. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. Like it was, it was, I mean, I had to, I had to hold back the tears in the middle of a supermarket, yeah. but it was, it was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the course is teaching us. And you know, Eckhart Tolle teaches the exact same thing. He calls it presence. Mm. He's saying, you know, you, you cultivate this ability to, to be present um, and not be an insane voice talking to itself whilst you are encountering someone or speaking to someone or talking to someone or whatever else the case may be. And, and, and it just, healing just happens. It's got nothing to, to do with what you're doing. It's everything to do with where you're sitting, that you've fallen back and, and, and therefore knowing your brother is also that. And then healing happens, but it's, it's got nothing to do with you. Mm. That the Holy Spirit takes care of that. <laughs> um, so beautiful story, yeah. Um, that's what we want to work towards. You, you know, we want to be ourselves when we're out on the street. We want to be catching ourselves, thinking about the insane voice talking to itself, and listening to someone only so we get a chance for when this shut up to put our ten cents where it is. <laughs> and uh, um, it's noticing that and falling back. What's well, funny, exactly I was dri I was driving away from the supermarket like five minutes after that meeting that person mm -hmm. and something came in, a, a usual guilt trick that the ego would, would use and it'd be around my eldest daughter because we trigger each other a lot. Like, and, right. And usually I, I would really feel guilty around a couple of particular situations and I just saw what it, what it was doing and I just, I just looked at it and said, no, no, that's I'm not going there. And it just yeah. went. Beautiful. And that's why another beautiful example. So yeah, we're on a roll here, Stadrian. Um, yeah. that's another beautiful example of why Jesus says in the course, a miracle is never wasted. It yeah. will have effects on people and situations and circumstances you will never know anything about. So again, here we have a story with someone who was able to be in her right mind. You're in her presence. And just the fact that she's seen you in your right mind because she's in hers, you experience yourself in your right mind. Suddenly then, what she will never know is that that has had a knock-on effect in your relationship with your daughter. And it has a knock-on effect on your relationship and your friendships and everything else. And it's going to go out like a domino effect into the world. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Another beautiful example of course in action and course principles in action. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.
Um, okay. So where should we go next, Eli? I hope everyone enjoyed my phone ringing. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I usually try to keep myself muted because you never know, you know. Anyway, Elaine, you have your hand up. You can go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, uh, similarly, I um, occasionally have an encounter with a certain person and I look at it as I see, and each time it happens, I take a, I have to take a deep breath because at first I get overwhelmed because she she comes at me with her ego, and then I I you know and then I just say okay I'm gonna she is essence of love and I'm gonna address her in a, a you know not an emotional way and so you know that's how I responded to a pre, just a recent experience this weekend. And um, each time I do it, she kind of does a 180 on what she previously had said to me, you know, about a decision she made because she, she's in an authority position <clears throat> at the art studio. And, and, e and each time I, you know, I credit my higher mind with, being a with, with you know just managing it in, instead of my ego, and every time it's like a real miracle, and oh, I yes. think I think that it makes her realize too that she has a higher self, you know. Like I don't think it's a conscious thing, but she responds in her higher self, whereas before it was the ego that I was dealing with. That's exactly the same thing, yeah. And, but it's important yeah. in those in instances to um, to, to understand that um, what is happening with you know bosses and people and strangers on the street and on the news and everything um, is happening for you. It is your lesson, and so it's not about us. Um, I, I'm not saying this is what you're saying, but I just want to clarify this. Um, right. It's not about right. us changing someone else or no, accepting no, the that's... atonement for someone else or putting someone else in the right mind that's none oh, of our yeah. business but yeah. it's the trick is that we've noticed oh look at my blockage i'm not sitting in my seat i'm not i'm not aware of lost presence in my mind look look at this coming up so this this person is now my savior and right. i am going to not say it's because their ego is coming at me that i'm feeling this way i'm actually going to understand they're now helping me to see this blockage in myself and if i don't blame them and if i fall back into my seat i can let this blockage clear and now i can be a right mind seeing their right mind and then the miracle happens the miracle extends yeah well that's yeah. part of it where i say okay um this is an opportunity i i don't want to see it like i don't want to label it her ego like you said I mm -hmm. want to see it as, okay, Elaine, opportunity to you, to live in your right mind and manage Perfect. life in your right mind. Yeah. Yes. To, and, and again, the way we do that is by releasing the block when it comes up. So it's not it's not really about um, pretending that that, you know, flash of hatred didn't come up in me and just hiding out in the light. It's really about me sitting with that flash of hatred and going, oh, look at my self-hatred. I have the opportunity to clear this now if I just don't blame someone else first. And and we let it pass and it allows us to slip into our right mind. And, and then we... You know, that's the miracle. We've chosen the miracle. That's our part done. And then, and then you know, the extension of the miracle through us, that's the Holy Spirit's business. Exactly. Brilliant. Yeah. So Beautiful. it was, thank you, Elaine. That's what happened to me this past weekend. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, where shall we go next, Eli? Nicole, you have your hand up. You can unmute yourself. Go for it, Nicole. Hey, so, um, so Keith, when you talked about how if you have needs and likes and dislikes, it's because, you know, your mind is sick with guilt and you brought up yep. like some good examples. So like for me, I'm like, okay, when I look in the mirror, I'm like, okay, like I need to lose weight. I'm about like 50 pounds of weight. You know, I like, I like to eat pizza a lot and do like eat certain foods and I, and it looks like I'm in like this cycle. So I'm saying I need to eat healthier. It looks like I need to eat healthier and do certain things to lose weight and get my body in a place to where I'd like it to be. But that is still 
I need to make sure like I'm not attached to that outcome. Like when you said like my salvation doesn't lie in that. So I still need to practice being in the theater with Jesus and not make it about, oh, hey, if I don't lose weight, if I, if I don't lose weight, I'm not going to be happy and stuff like that. So because you're saying it's still my guilt that's, that's in my mind. So I can still work out, eat healthy, but I have to work on again, just being in the cinema, correct, Keith, and not make it like, oh, this is good or bad. Does that make sense, my question? Yeah, yeah. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus isn't giving you a course where you can be aware of love's presence in your mind if you're like under eight stone and if your skin looks in a certain way and if your diet is a certain way, that's not Jesus's course. Um, this course is a course where um, Jesus is not interested in you trying to manipulate the world in order to find salvation, um, but rather that you can find, you know, lasting, eternal bliss, love, joy in your mind and it doesn't matter um what weight you are or what you're eating or where you live or mm. whether you're being you know welcomed to you know a family dinner or crucified um you know i can made the famous statement you know it was all the same to jesus whether he went went for a stroll or got crucified <laughs> um but the point is the healed mind doesn't have preferences I mean, look, the thing is, um, the reason we eat unhealthy and don't look after ourselves is because of our guilt. Uh, we're trying to compensate for our guilt. It's like, I, I'm not okay on the inside, uh, so I'm going to eat. And that's going to make me feel okay and blah, 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 blah. And then you see, you know, we eat and then, you know, we have more weight on it. And then we, and then we're, now, now we're still not okay. <laughs> and we're saying, well, mm -hmm. now I'm not okay because I've got too much weight on me. Um, and now I'm going to postpone being okay until I like lose the weight and then I'm still not okay. And I'm going, okay, well, you know, I'm not okay because I'm still craving the foods that I really want, but they're, you know, they're bad for me. And then, you know, it's hell. Um, yeah. and so you see the the course is about want. stop trying to fix it. That's what the course is about. You haven't a clue. <laughs> None of us have a clue. We, we, you know, the, the problem is that we've chosen separateness and therefore guilt because it's the same thing. Yourself, separateness friends. and guilt are the same thing. We've chosen that. And now our ego plan is let's manipulate the world so it doesn't like aggravate my, my blockages, <laughs> my guilt inside of me. Um, let me do things that will help cover over my guilt and I can like ignore it and think well of myself and let me push things away and avoid situations in the world that are that I think will, will aggravate this like guilt and not okayness that's going on inside of me. That's what we're doing, right? That's where Jesus meets us in the course. And where he wants to take us from is he's going he's, he's to say, stop doing any of that. You have one problem, the decision to be separate from the Holy Spirit and me in your mind. And there's one solution to everything. Fall back. Fall back. Don't be the insane voice talking to itself. Be the one who hears it with me. And then all your not okayness is going to come up. The world's going to stimulate it. It's going to come up. And together, just be with me. Let me look at it with you. And if you let me look at it with you and you don't blame the world, you don't try and fix it. You don't say, oh, my God, I feel so like empty. But if I eat pizza, that might like cheer me up. a <laughs> bit. <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> let me not try and fix it with pizza. Let me not try and fix it with losing weight. Let me not try and fix it by blaming someone else and going, you did this to me. Let me let let me fall back uh, to the me who's always OK, because the me in the cinema is always OK. And and let me look with Jesus at all of my blockages clearing without trying to fix them. So don't touch it. <laughs> don't touch it. Don't try and fix it. Let it, let it, let it resolve itself. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Good. Where should we go next, Eli? We, next we have Kirsten. You can unmute yourself. Hello. <clears throat> Hi, Keith. Hi, Kirsten. Hi, everybody. Um, so in line with everything you're talking about, especially the don't touch it stuff, I um, had this really weird 
experience where I was hyper focusing on um, somebody in my life that has anorexia and she had sent me pictures of herself because she had an event to go to. And um, I, I, I was in the woods and I was walking and I was hyper focusing on her. And then I watched myself hyper focusing, you know, like we're all practicing. And all of a sudden I just had this feeling of recognizing how safe my ego feels when I think about all the things that I could do to make it better or change it, or what should I do? And, you know, the busyness of trying to fix it, like you're talking about. And then I stepped back and I, and I, there was this feeling of um, compassion from my, I guess my right mind noticing my, it, cause it's sadness. It's like wanting to fix it is that's the whole problem, you know? Yes. And so, right. So I, I, I can't explain it except that the notice, like there was this compassion for myself that I thought I had to do something yes. and I don't have to do anything. Right. And then I, I, there's just this feeling of love, I guess. I, you that's know it. what I mean? That's it. You yeah. And back it, into can... the love. You exactly. fall back into the love, Kristen, and you know, that's what you are in the cinema and that's what your friend is that's the atonement yeah. that's the atonement you know um it it says there is no problem no matter what it doesn't matter what darkness you're surrounded by it doesn't matter about the hordes of demons coming over the mountains it's like you hold fast that there is no problem there's no problem that's what you do um, and you fall back into that space in your mind where love is and love extends itself. And, and then without you doing anything more, like we were talking about with Adrian, that because you've healed the sickness in your own mind that says, I'm not okay because of your guilt, you've, you, you've let it go. You've gone back into your right mind where all is well in the cinema. Despite yeah. your mind still rabbiting on, it's not gone. You didn't silence it. You didn't turn off the insane voice talking to itself. You fell back and became the noticer of it with Jesus. Now you're with Jesus. Um, and as you do that, um, that healing goes out to the entire sonship. That's what healing is. Now, just as a little bonus on that, um, if you're in that space and you know there's no problem here because, you know, your friend might recover and she might end up in hospital and she might die. And you know there's no problem here because right. you're in your right mind. You're in your right mind and you're seeing her right mind, which is birthless and deathless and cannot be sick. And okay. because you're in that space, that, that healing extends to her. It's not for you to see it or to notice it or, you know, or, or, or dictate how that healing should look. That's a total mistake. That's the Holy Spirit's business. Um, and in terms of when, that's the Holy Spirit's business. It's none of yours. Um, but as a little bonus on top of that, then in your interactions with her, once you're holding to the belief that there is no problem here, um, you become part of what in the world is contributing towards there being no problem so you'll just sort of know when to speak and when to pause and what to say and what not to say uh, provided you hold to the atonement that says no problem here yeah and the one more thing that's also true and exactly exactly what i'm thinking too mm -hmm. and i it doesn't matter what it is like i in my work, a lot of my people that I'm in, that I work with, for example, have dementia. And it's amazing to not see them, see this person as only that, that she's experiencing this particular person. And, and I can, we can join, like, there's no problem. Yeah. Egos yeah. can't join. So your insane voice talking to itself can't join with their insane voice talking to itself. Uh, but if you fall back, if you're just the noticer of the insane voice talking to itself in your head and your stuff yeah. coming up, but you're experiencing, you're noticing the noticer, um, now, now you can see the noticer in them. You can see beyond the illusion of an insane voice talking to itself. You know, their insane voice is just a little bit different than yours, but they're both insane. <laughs> There's no hierarchy <laughs> of illusions. <laughs> um, 
all voices in the head are insane. You're looking beyond that to the truth. And you can only do that from the truth of yourself. Yeah. Thank you. This is this is so powerful. I really agree. I think. Okay, so just just because this kind of is, um, if you were if you happened to be following the workbook lessons, you know, daily up until today's date, um, it's I rest in God. So let's have a little bit of a read of that. We ask for rest today and quietness, unshaken by the world's appearances. We ask for peace and stillness in the midst of all the turmoil born of clashing dreams. So we ask for rest and quietness. We're falling back into the quietness that can be aware of the noise. We ask for peace and stillness in the midst of all the turmoil, even in our own mind. You know, let your ego knock itself out. Just fall back and be the witness of it. That's the peace. We ask for safety and for happiness, although we seem to look on danger and on sorrow. The safe, all the safety and happiness is in falling back and realizing, but I'm not the body. I'm not the emotions clearing. I'm not the insane voice talking to itself. I'm what's with Jesus. I am the noticer. I am not what I'm noticing. And we have the thought that will answer our asking with what we request. I rest in God. My friends are in trouble. My body is sick. I'm craving pizza. I've got too much weight on me. I've got, I rest in God. This thought will bring to you the rest and quiet, peace and stillness, and the safety and the happiness you seek. All the happiness you have ever wanted in your life and sought vainly in all the wrong places is by falling back and realizing you're the noticer. And the love, peace and joy of God is just shining in your mind. I rest in God. This thought has power to wake the sleeping truth in you, whose vision sees beyond appearances to that same truth in everyone and everything there is. Here is the end of suffering for all the world and everyone who ever came and yet will come to linger for a while. Here is the thought in which the Son of God is born again to recognize himself. I'm the noticer. I'm what's in the cinema with Jesus. I rest in God. Completely undismayed, this thought will carry you through storms and strife, past misery and pain, past loss and death, and onwards to the certainty of God. There is no suffering it cannot heal. All the sufferings in your mind, your wrong mind, the one you're noticing. But if you're the noticer, you rest in God. There is no suffering can prevail. There is no suffering it cannot heal. There is no problem that it cannot solve. And no appearance will turn to truth before the eyes of you who rest in God. Let's try that one again. And no appearance will, but will turn to truth before the eyes of you who rest in God. This is the day of peace. You rest in God. And while the world is torn by wings of hate, 
your rest remains completely undisturbed. In him, you have no cares and no concerns, no burdens, no anxiety, no pain, no fear of future and no past regrets. All that's in the insane voice talking to itself. Fall back. Rest in God. You rest today. And as you close your eyes, sink into stillness. You do not have to have your mind still. You just fall back and you're the stillness noticing the noise. Let these periods of rest and respite reassure your mind that all its frantic fantasies were but the dreams of fever that has passed by. Let it be still and thankfully accept its healing. No more fearful dreams will come now that you rest in God. Take time today to slip away from dreams and into peace. Fall back. The world is born again each time you rest and hourly remember that you came to bring the peace of God into the world that it may take its rest along with you. So you, you, you fall back, you rest in God. You feel the love, the joy, the peace, the all is wellness of God, and it shines from you to save the world. Sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself. There is no problem here. I rest in God. You rest within the peace of God today. And call upon your brothers from your rest to draw them to their rest along with you. You rest within the peace of God today, quiet and unafraid. Each brother comes to take his rest and offer it to you. We rest together here. For thus our rest is made complete and what we give today, we have received already. And we remind them of their resting place each time we tell ourselves, I rest in God. That was quite, um, yeah, that, that fits nicely with our theme today <laughs> um, in terms of today's lesson. Okay, where should we go next, Eli? Okay, Kirsty, you have your hand up. You can unmute yourself. Thanks, Eli. Hi, Hi Kirsty. Um, I understand, I think, what we're talking about. So we're, we're falling back, we're resting in God. I do understand that. And I think that will probably be the answer, your answer to the question I'm about to ask. But um, when the lady before was talking about pizza, and which is, I have a similar relationship to pizza, to that lady. And when you were saying, um, don't try and solve the problem with pizza, don't try and solve the problem with dieting. Now, just on a very practical note, to me, that is a conflict. I would either solve it with pizza or solve it with diet. If I want to, do you see what I mean? If I'm not meant to diet, but I'm not meant to stuff the problems down with pizza, <laughs> what what well, do I do you, do you see what I mean by that? Yeah. Well, look, what we're gonna say is you're gonna fall back. You're gonna notice the guilt inside of you, which makes you feel like you're not okay. And that guilt is gonna send a message to the artificial intelligence in your head, the insane voice talking to itself, and it's going, What do I do to be okay? And the mind's going to generate a fix. And it's going to say pizza is the answer. Um, and what you and but but what you are is you're noticing. You you know again this course is about allowing Jesus to look at your 
your ego with you. It's not about fixing your ego, right? Uh, it's, it's about slowly and gradually releasing your identification with the ego and making your home with Jesus in the cinema. So all you want to do is you want to be noticing that you're not okay because there's guilt in you. And you want to be noticing that you're fixing it and and forgive yourself for it. And, and you want to know that it's not going to work, that the pizza will take away the, the not okayness of guilt for about maybe 10 minutes. And then the guilt will set in because you'll go, God, that's another few pounds on me. So it's enough for you to notice that you are, you know, be with Jesus, noticing that you are choosing the ego. Um, you know, um, you know what, what you don't want to do is you don't want to be in any way judging. See, if, if, if you have any judgment over your thoughts or your feelings or your actions, you're not with Jesus. The noticer has no opinions on anything. It's just an awareness. It is a witness to the ego and what it's doing. And that's it. That's all you're asked to do. And, you know, there will come a point where this noticing will bring you to a place of readiness that when the not okayness comes up um, and the mind goes, I need pizza, um, you know, just just persisting with this being with Jesus, it will naturally bring you to a place where when the not okayness comes up, when your guilt is arising so it can clear, um, that, that, you know, really all you would do is, is, is look at the guilt um, and it's gone. Um, but, but, you know, you don't need to do that right away. We would just, we just want to be with Jesus and let him look at our ego. You know, that, that, that's, the, that's the magic, right? Um, you know, in, in other words, I, I don't want people, you know, um, I'm saying like fall back and then, you know, forget about you, everything your mind is telling you and just do what Jesus is telling you because none of us are going to do that, right? Um, so, so all you want to do is you want to notice that there's guilt and there's not okayness and that you, you, you're, you're, you're lying to yourself again and saying something in the world will fix this. Something other than letting go of my separateness. Something other than, you know, letting go of my identification as this insane voice talking to itself. Um, that's what's going to be my salvation. That's the answer to my guilt. So I suppose it doesn't really matter if you do um, eat the pizza, as long as you are noticing, you're observing yourself doing that and realising that it is guilt in your mind. Or as it doesn't long, really matter if you're yeah. dieting. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what action you take, as long as you're... No. Sitting in the as cinema, long, observing it with Jesus, as, or at least as, being aware that it's not you. Yeah. Whatever you're doing, that you're doing it, that, that whatever, whatever you're doing, that you're watching the movie of you doing it with Jesus. It's not actually you who's stuffing pizza down your, your gob. It's actually you're at home with Jesus. It's the full self that's doing that kind of thing. Is that, is that the idea? That's the idea. That's the idea. I'm not a body, I'm free, I'm still as God created me. So whatever the body is doing isn't you. So whether it's dieting or whether it's overeating or whatever, it doesn't really matter as long as you observe it. I get you now, Keith, I understand you now, yeah. Really, really what we want to just do is we want to, because when we as the one consciousness um, decided um you know, we split off our guilt and then we thought it was God coming to get us. And we're like, right, we need to get out of our minds. We need to become mindless and forget our minds. So we're going to like shatter ourselves, our, ourself, uh, like, like a pane of glass. And then we're going to project all those selves out into the world. And as soon as we go out and we go into a body, we're going to, we're going to forget that we're a mind. We're going to think we're the body. That was our plan. And Jesus has a course, which is about teaching us to be mindful again. How do you become mindful? You fall back and you watch the body with Jesus. Just witness it. You just notice it. And, and within that identity as the noticer um, is love. You're not going to feel that straight away. It'll feel more like peace first. 
um, but as you persist um, within that identity as the noticer of thoughts and feelings happening is love. And then as you persist, as you just put all your attention on the noticing, um, the love in your mind will wipe all the shadows out. So don't be involved in the fight. I'm not saying don't do anything in the world. Just don't make it important. Uh, it's not what's important. Um, you know, and sometimes, you know, um, changing your behavior is necessary for your safety in a situation. So, you know, do that. But again, that's not the miracle. That's not what you're here. It's not what it's about, right? So do that and take care of it in terms of making a decision in the world. But for the love of God, fall back. Be the noticer. Um, put all your attention on the noticer for the rest of your life and love will ignite in your mind and it will it will erase all the shadows. That's that's the plan. And that's why Ken always said, look at the course, it's just about letting Jesus look at your ego with you. Because if you fall into that noticer, um, you know, and even if you if, if it seems nebulous and it seems gray and it's not something that's very well defined in the beginning, just put all your attention on it. Just stake, you know, put all your eggs in that basket, right? Because it's salvation's basket. Just do it. Just in the midst of your madness and your upset and your anger and your rage and your jealousy, just let Jesus look at it with you, which means that you're in the noticer, which means that you're in the seat of self. And and just be the noticer as much as you possibly can in your life until love ignites and until it chases all the shadows out of you forever. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, Keith. It does. I was walking the dog today listening to music in the park and then for some reason my um, what I was listening to just defaulted without any action on my part. It just suddenly defaulted to Tom Carpenter dialogue on awakening which I haven't listened to <laughs> for goodness. years it just literally it just you know it literally just went and um a Tom or Jesus or Tom was doing the voice of Jesus was saying all you have to do is refuse to accept that you are anything other than perfect just surrender to that thought that's the only thing you have to do and he wasn't Brilliant. giving any practical instructions to Tom. He was just saying yeah. that. But I and guess what is... you're doing here is giving the actual mechanism, the practical Absolutely. instruction to that Absolutely. awareness. Absolutely. Yes. 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 So it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. Um, you're perfect. It doesn't matter if you are, you know, being crucified on a cross. You're, you're perfect. The noticer of it is perfect. All you have is an identity problem. Fall back. Now, you know, our guilt is going to limit the extent to which we will relinquish our false identity. But as we undo the guilt, as we look at our ego without making it guilty, as we look at ourselves eating the pizza without, because remember, if you're looking at yourself eating the pizza with guilt, you're not with Jesus. judgment there's none in your right mind there's no judgment in the cinema it's noticing witnessing pure awareness um lovely that's a yeah yeah perfectly complimentary thank you thank you Thanks, Keith. that's wonderful uh where should we go next Eli? well i just want to throw in here that i call it the holy spirit diet <laughs> <laughs> yes, then, you told me about this. <laughs> yes. Like every day I eat you usually like this is a good size cookie. I usually eat about two of those. Oh my god, is that a white chocolate cookie? Uh macadamia white chocolate. Yes. Oh Homemade. my I made god, them. it's like cocaine to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, me too. So anyway, so I'm working on two of them today. And yesterday it was, well, I only had one piece of pie left. So I had one piece of pie and the cookie. And the day before that was two pieces of pie. So like every day I'm eating something or other. But like I said, I do it with a holy, I leave, I just get with Holy Spirit. And yeah. and anyway, and so when I got up this morning, I was two pounds lighter. 
<laughs> wow. I don't blame that on the Holy Spirit or anything. I just don't like I just I'm gonna blame the Holy Spirit for not giving me the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know. I just let whatever honestly, happens happen. If if, if I, we if I, we actually put that in the context of the course, Eli. Um, how many more do we have? To, is it just Angela that's left, Eli? Yeah. Um, we have. Oh, Kirsty. Sorry, we have Angela. Yes. So we'll, we'll draw a line out of the questions for this week after. Okay. That. But just just in terms yeah. of what you're saying, in terms of the course, what the course is saying is that um, we don't put on weight um, because we've eaten food. Uh, we put on weight because the mind said to the body, put on weight. And and Jesus is in the course um, really saying to us that, um, you know, the body does nothing in it, has no intelligence and the world doesn't act on it and nothing. The mind tells the body what to do. So what you're saying actually is perfectly, um, you know, backed up by what Jesus is teaching us in the course. Um, I haven't mastered that one yet, Eli. I'm on a, I'm on a diet at the moment. <laughs> uh, but what you're yeah. saying is perfectly, perfectly true. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah, I've been Angela. for a long, long time. But Angela, yes, Fair go play. ahead. Go ahead, Angela. The stage is yours. Have we lost Angela? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hi, Angela. Hi, Keith. Um. I just want to thank you for you. See, you know, my dog's barking in the back, so I'll, hopefully, um, for bringing up the notice of the noticer. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to share an experience this week that I had. Um, my uh, partner, uh, he had a knee replacement last Friday. And so, all I don't want to say my duties, but everything he needs my help. And um, I've had my role has changed basically. And you know, I'm walking the dog, I'm putting out the garbage, I'm doing the extras. But I'm also concerned that I'm helping him with the icing and all of that that goes with it. So I had an incident when it was, uh, I think, the middle of like Wednesday that I was walking my dog. And I took a dizzy spell, or I could feel myself feeling dizzy. So I got back to the house and I told him, oh, I'm not gonna be able to do this. Well, anyways, what I recognized is that basically I think I was having an anxiety, but not recognizing, just doing, doing, and wanting, unless we were talking about today, being perfect, right? Um, and, I, and my thoughts were probably really jam, you know, like there wasn't any specific thought going on there, but I just knew that. And so what I did, and I can only say that I, um, I didn't judge the ego, but what I said to him is I went and sat down and I said, stop it, stop it. And I recognized I'm going to sit with Jesus today. And I, I don't know if I want to say an affirmation, but I asked the, you know, the angels to be with me. And I wanted to see the light around me. I put on a meditation. I must have fell asleep for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I got up. I was as strong as can be. I was ready to go. So right. I really tried to put the work, the noticer of the notice, you know, and I, I don't feel I was resisting it. It's almost like I commanded the ego, just stop it. And I, and I, I had some compassion for myself because I real, I put on, I thought I'm going to put on something that be still with God and just that it's all going to be okay. So I just want to share that. And I've been okay yeah. ever since because right. I have had bouts of, um, when I, after I lost my husband in 2007, I experienced a lot of anxiety. Uh, and, you know, I've had to work with that. And the course has been wonderful for that, Keith. Uh, you know, uh, here and there, but, you know, like the ego does creep up with different, when we are presented with different, uh, I guess I want to say those that come as assignments in our life or, you know, 
but I just wanted to share that today. So I thank you so much for your, you know, you're very helpful to us. And um, it was, it was just, it has given me strength to, to carry on with him as a caregiver because I, I'm not perfect, but I'm doing the best I can. And I love that Jesus can be with me. So thank you. You are perfect. perfect. And stop trying stop to do perfect. the best you can to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, the noticer is perfect. The noticer rests in God. So all we ever have to do is notice the noticer. And then our blocks will just clear. So, and again, with our anxiety, again, what we never want to do is try and use the course to fight the anxiety or cure the anxiety because that's making the illusion real and then trying to fix it. And Jesus is blue in the face saying to us, don't do that. Don't do that. Bring the illusion to the truth. Bring the darkness to the light. Let me look at it with you. I'll take care of it. And so all we ever do is let the anxiety rage and fall back and go look at look at my guilt clearing let me just rest in god let me be here in the cinema with jesus and let's watch the fireworks display until it fizzles out and all that guilt's removed from my mind forever yeah brilliant brilliant so that was a lovely note to take us out on angela Okay, everyone, thank you very much for your attention. I'm going to lead, uh, I don't know whether Dan is still on the line or not from the Miracle uh, Network, but I'm going to lead uh, a morning meditation on the Miracle Network on Wednesday. So I will put a link in the group uh, if you want to join us for that. Uh, it might be the middle of the night for people in Canada and the US <laughs> if it's 10 a.m. here, so that might not be a go. But if anyone wants to join us, I'll put that in. And then I am recording, I got I got asked to be a guest on Miracle Voices with Tam Morgan and with Matt McCabe, actually. So we're recording an episode on Thursday and I'll let you know when that comes out. And um, was there anything else I wanted to mention? I think that was the two things I wanted to mention. And so um, thank you all very much for your attention once again. And um whatever else you do with your Sunday, um, do it from the cinema. Do it and notice the noticer of, of doing it. And um, thank you very much. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. 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 Thank